All right. First of all, I want I want you to know, uh, not only am I bringing this shirt to to Phoenix, but I'm going to bring you boxes of Kleenex because I, I think you're going to need them for all the crying that you've done. No, no, no. I'm I'm good now. I'm good all now. the crying that you're going to do. I mean, think about it. They went to the Final Four, and, and I'm going to intro us now, but. Uh, obviously, welcome into the Goodman and Hummel pod. All of this preceding will be used on the pod. Um, they went to the Final Four, and the waterworks from Robbie Hummel were coming strong. What will happen if they win the whole thing, Rob? You, there's no way you're going to be able to contain yourself. Yeah. Well, no, I think I will. I think I will. How you couldn't? You broke down. But it was more so about what Coach Painter was saying. You know, I was very happy, obviously, but it was it was in talking to him and hearing what he was saying. He was saying really nice things, yeah. and I I have the utmost respect for him. So yes, of course, I'm I'm happy that we won, and like I wasn't like crying on the air. I wasn't like <laughs> sobbing as Kevin Kugler wrapped it up. It was more so when Coach Painter came over. I I guess it really started. Paul Luss came over and gave me a hug. And yeah. Coach Plus recruited me, and then Elliot Bloom came over, and that that's where, yeah. you know, the relationships. And I, I also am so happy for all the dudes on that team because I know that what they've been through and what they've heard for the last year and everything you go through, even like morons like you that are making up every reason why they can't win. Oh, they don't shoot it good enough. Then they're the best shooting team in the country. Oh, they're not tough How did enough. they shoot it yesterday? How did they shoot it yesterday? Yeah, and they still won. I, even with saying. their concern, they still won the game. I'm just saying. You said, I don't know if they'll make them when they matter. Did Lance Jones make it when it mattered? He did. He also he also had some, you know, not great shots early, but he made a big one late, a huge one late. Oh, did you want to bench him so that our, our best guy on Connect wouldn't play in the second half? I, I, listen, I can't believe this. See, but this is where I'm great. talking about. Like, there's been narr- – I saw – you know, you just – you see all these narratives, and there's a, I'm just surprised at how much people hate Purdue um, from, like, a just random – I feel like a lot of it might be based on you and how you treat me. I think a lot of people out there don't like wouldn't, you anymore. Wouldn't so that like be a Purdue. plot twist? Rob bullies <laughs> Jeff, so therefore we don't like Purdue. All right, can we can we get to, though, honestly, a serious question, a serious question. What do you think that meant to, to Matt Painter? What, because he's gone through a lot here, dating back to, obviously, you and, and your knee injury, uh, I think me putting him in the hot seat after two really bad years that people were, were wondering, maybe going to Missouri. We talked about that. We, You and I have talked about that over and over, over the years, and how worried you were he was going to Missouri at that point because it was real. Like, there was some yeah, real- my, my goal during that time was to guilt him as much as possible into not going to Missouri. <laughs> it worked. It worked. <laughs> Can I shame him into staying with by calling him every night and asking for an update? Um, no, I mean, it. I think it... it for him, I don't feel like he needed from a personal standpoint to feel like he was validated. I think he knows he's a really good coach. But I think for everybody around the program, when you play for him and you understand how good of a guy he is and what he does for not just Purdue, but all of college basketball, by by doing stuff with USA Basketball, by doing stuff with the NABC and all the stuff he does on the committees, you know, I – he deserves to be recognized up there with the best coaches. Yeah. But for whatever reason, we've established that the – and I think it's because all the best coaches – or not all of them, or a lot of the best coaches have made the Final Four, right? Like, that's that's what they've done. And if you want to be spoken about in those breaths, then you got to make the Final Four yourself. So I know that's why I'm happy for him. I, I guess your your question was more so – I don't think that he, he needed that. I think that, you know, if he never made it – I. He wanted to make the Final Four. Don't get me wrong, but I, I don't feel like he needed to, to see his team go to the Final Four to believe that he was a good coach. I but think you he, know what it he did. You know what it did? It, it did validate him as a Hall of Fame coach. That does. That's what that does, Rob. That's, That's what it point. does. And I think it validated the program, too, even more so. Not that it hasn't been one of the, the best programs in America over the years, but again, look at how quickly it can change the tune of a program being like really, really good to okay, they're at a different level. And especially, again, for a guy like Payne, who you said, and, and everybody knows, is like the best dude in the world, has done it the right way forever. When a lot of other yeah. coaches haven't, they've compromised their integrity over the years when maybe things haven't been going as well. 
that dude has never done it. I mean, look at this year's team, Rob, and he doesn't have any McDonald's All Americans or anything close to it. Yeah, I know. It's amazing. And they're and they're really, really good. They've got really, really good players, and it's mostly kind of homegrown from recruiting them out of high school outside of Lance Jones. I mean, he's he's the one transfer, and to see him do that in an era where I guess that's becoming more increasingly rare. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty remarkable. But still, like you know that those dudes have, have just and Coach Painter talked about it plenty the whole season and, and even in his post game interview last night with CBS or whatever channel that was on TBS TNT <laughs> wherever the game was. Um, you know, they had to they had to sit in this, as he said. We've taught we've we've had this feeling for an entire year. And, you know, a lot of a lot of guys would wilt. That that was an iconic performance from from Zach Eady. Yeah, it was 40 and 16 when you've got another first team all American who is equally as good for a lot of that game, but Zach's just a little bit better. Like he really is. He, he just, he I, people there's, it's amazing. There's still people that don't think he's good. I, I believe that he is a generational college player. He is up there with making the final four and, and they still have work to do. You know, you win the national championship, you're looked at in a different way, but to get Purdue to the Final Four for the first time since 1980, over the last nine games, he's averaging like 27 and 15. Those are ridiculous numbers. You you can be seven foot and average two and two. I've seen it a lot. I've seen a lot of seven footers average two points and two rebounds and and not play hard and and not rebound outside their area, not protect the rim. He does all that stuff. You know, he's he's an unbelievable college basketball player. I think he'll get a crack in the NBA. I, I oh, he, he is will. way too productive. He'll make it. He'll make the no, NBA. I know. I, I agree. Is, I just think it's guy. hilarious that there's he'll people that no, and that's okay. Right, right. I mean, you right. get paid a lot of money to be a role guy. Totally. Um, I just am still blown away that there's people that that you know think he has no chance. You know, he'll he'll play in Lithuania next year. No, he won't. <laughs> He's not playing over there. Not next year. You know, the the biggest thing is his development. Uh, has been unbelievable again from a kid that he didn't think he could play when he first got to Purdue he questioned it right I mean they kicked his ass and he questioned it to a guy that again was coming off the bench uh with with Trevion Williams and right and then eventually Payne yeah. understood like I think they had Matt Harms him. too I think that's what they're like three centers um, right in that first year but he also he reclassified yeah. so he got there like I think in December and then I'm sure you go from, even though IMG has some real players, yeah. you, you go from that where there is talent, but now you've got 22 year old, you know, Travion Williams is a pretty big dude. Yeah. <laughs> He'd be baptism by fire. So, Hey, what do you, when, when you hear people not even complain, cause I, I get people complaining about the style. Like I understand that, right, Rob, you do too. Like we'd rather probably most people would rather watch a game. That's a little bit more up and down. What I get pissed off at is the people that complain, well, Zach Eady gets all these calls. I know. Like, what's your take on that? You've well, the, seen the it more three than second, anybody. The three-second thing is funny because people don't know what the rule is yeah. in college. So they're they're wrong. And then I think Explain the – Explain how they're wrong. Now, Explain I will say, it, I'm watching the – oh, you once yeah. you lift a foot, one foot out, your, your three is reset. You get a new three. Um, I did think in the Gonzaga game – in the Sweet 16 game, I thought he he did foul Anton Watson, and then he tackled Ryan Nemhard. He could have easily had two fouls in that game. But like, dude, okay, officials miss calls. They they miss calls that that happens as part of the game. Um, he gets fouled all the time. Toby Awaka, I don't understand this. There was a point in the game yesterday where he was backing Awaka down, and Awaka had two hands into him, like he's pass protection. And they didn't call, and they didn't call. And for about ten seconds, they called a foul. I'm like, nothing changed. <laughs> he was doing that for ten seconds. Yeah, um, I, I feel like he 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 doesn't get more calls than he should. He should no, get I, more. He doesn't. But, but here's the thing: I've always felt like the best players get more calls because they put more pressure on. You know, whether that's Evan Turner putting substantial pressure on the rim. He will yeah. generate calls. He's Dalton good. Connect. He's Even strong. Dalton connect. Right. Dalton connect will get calls. He puts yep. pressure on you in transition. Right. Edie is going to put severe pressure on you in the post because he's bigger. He's stronger. 
He's got a good skill set. In order to survive with that, yeah. Like Toby Awaka is six eight. <laughs> He's guarding again. It's seven four. Right. That's right. good. So I I'm just blown away when people were like, well, why are the fouls not even? Well, Tennessee is 275th in fouls per game. <laughs> Purdue is 13th. Right. That's one thing. Zach Eady leads the country in free throws attempted, free throws made, and personal fouls drawn. It, it's not always going to be even. It, just because Tennessee plays Purdue doesn't mean that it's going to be an even number. I think Tennessee was like eighth and ninth in the SEC in free throws made, free throws attempted. So they, they shoot a lot of threes. And do, do refs miss calls? Yes, they do. On both sides, they are going to miss calls. Um, but it, it is hilarious that that people have <laughs> built this narrative that it's just, you know, bad for the game or, oh, really, a guy that averages 25 and 14 is bad for the game. That's, yeah, yeah that makes Ridic- sense. And, and and then you throw in the part of, like, what a good kid he is. No, and he's a great kid, and he works hard, and he wasn't a good – he wasn't a high recruit. He was in the 400s. Some of it to me is funny too, where you see people that you know have have like played the game with other big people, and it was cool then, but now it's not. Right, right. Yeah, it's changed. I mean, again, like let's face it. It was cool when your team was whooping up on people, but now you say, no, I don't, I don't think it's good anymore. 